Nihon Minka En, or in English, Japan Open Air Museum. This museum was opened in 1967 and gave new life to traditional Japanese homes. The houses date back to as far as early 17th century up to the 19th century. It was created to address the disappearance of traditional houses in Japan, taken from all over Japan and reassembled on the slopes of Tama Hills. The museum gives us a chance to experience and imagine how people in Japan lived 300 years ago. To make the museum accessible for all, they offer wheelchairs, strollers, and lockers at the main gate free of charge. You do have to pay a small admissions fee of 550 yen for adults, 330 yen for seniors, for junior high school students and below, it's free. Located on the same property as the museum is a traditional indigo dyeing workshop which offers the opportunity to go in free and see the process of making traditional indigo tie-dyed clothes. You can also try making dyed fabrics for a cost, starting from 605 yen for dyeing your own handkerchief to dyeing a t-shirt for around 2640 yen. If you want to try this, I suggest taking your own white handkerchief or plain t-shirt. The dye used is derived from a plant of the Polygonaceae family. This plant has been used in Japan for generations. There are also ready-made products available for purchase at this shop. The museum is mapped out in five main sections. Post Station, Shinetsu Village, Kanto Village, Kanagawa Village, and finally Northeast Village. Each focuses on a region of Japan. There are a total of 23 houses to view, but I will highlight a few. The first house you'll see in Post Station is the Hara House. This captivating house is a testament to architectural perseverance. This unique structure took an astonishing 22 years to complete. Relocated from Shirakaba Higashi Nagano, the Hara family started out as fertilizer manufacturers and then ventured into politics. They amassed great wealth and had up to five or six maids at any one time living on the premises. Talk about rich. The second house I'll highlight is called the Misawa House, which I like to call the House Without Nails. Blasphemous, I know. Can you imagine a house without nails now? Built in the mid-19th century, this house stays intact because of the stones that are placed on the roof. Taken from Nishimachi in Nagano, the Misawa House showcases the intricate art of joinery and woodworking. Joinery dates back to as far as 12th century Japan. This technique focuses on building houses or furniture without the use of nails. The owners were a prominent family that made medicines and functioned as a community pharmacy. They also had an inn for pilgrims on their way to the Koji Temple or Ise Shrine. Yamada House this 250 years old house was originally a farmhouse, relocated from an area now submerged because of the construction of a dam in Toyama, Katsura, Nanto City. The family that owned this house made silkworms and crystalline salt, also known as gunpowder. Another interesting house in the Shinetsu zone of the museum is the Sasaki House. Built in 1731 on the riverbanks of Chikumagawa River, originated from Nagano Prefecture. Sadly, in 1741, the river overflowed in the village, killing 40% of the villagers. Subsequently, the Sasaki House was preserved and moved to higher grounds. The house was used both as a farmhouse and dye house. The Sasaki family also used the wooden space at the dirt-floored end of the house as a private elementary school. 
Last house I'll feature in this review is the Toxic Storehouse on Stilts. This late 19th century storehouse originated from Uchijiro, Wadomari Town, Oshima, Kagoshima. The four beams on the storage house were made from a toxic tree called Iju. The hardwood and toxic bark protects it from termites. At the top of the beams are four metal sheeting used to prevent rats from going inside and four bamboo lattice used to protect against seasonal typhoons. The storehouse mainly stored rice and grain. They would hit the ladder of the storehouse to discourage thieves from trying to enter. Let's go back to the front of the museum, the exhibition hall. Inside, you can learn details about the lifestyle of the people in that era. There's also an in-depth explanation of how the houses were built and their differences depending on which region it came from. The miniature models of the houses further illustrate the information. It was quite interesting because we got to see the tools they used, clothes they wore and more. The museum offers an interactive and informative experience. I think, I think if you are in Kawasaki, Nihon Minka En is definitely worth a visit. Plus, you get so much value without breaking the bank. Hey, thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe.